Wow, thank you very much, uh, Sister Cynthia. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this new month of May. Uh, I'm so excited to be one of those who are actually opening this month of May. And like our sister Cynthia has pointed out, I hope you can all hear me. Yes, we can. Ma Am I being heard by everybody? Yes, you are. Okay. All right. Um, I was saying that it's um I'm privileged to be one of those who are beginning with this month of May, and and we're going to be addressing the the, the aspect of the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. And we have heard so much about the Holy Spirit, but I also thank God again, and I want to join my uh, my sister in appreciating the, 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 the administration at All Saints for persisting, persisting in making sure that we receive from the Lord every top of the hour we have been receiving from God and and I know that each one of us has got a deposit in our hearts that is not leaving us the same. We are growing and we are a testimony to the fact that uh, God has been gracious to us at all saints. And we salute our leaders, we salute our, our, our clergy, and we salute everybody that has put their heart their prayers and their effort in making sure that we benefit, that we grow. This evening, we're going to look at the spirit, the evidence of God's presence with us. And that is what we are going to look at. It is, it is very deep, but it is also very powerful and profound for the growth and effectivity of the Christian life of the Christian, as we are supposed to be called. The Christian cannot survive, cannot live, cannot be effective in ministry without the Holy Spirit. And so this evening, we're going to look at uh, our text in 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 13. And I will, I will read it for us. First uh, John chapter 4, verse 7 to 13, we're addressing the spirit, the evidence of God's presence with us. And it says, dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. And verse 10 says, this is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us, praise the Lord, and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, verse 11, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And brethren, this is very profound because the presence of God without anything else, if we cannot, if we are there as just Christians without the presence of God, we are without effectivity. Our lives are of no consequence. 
So what we're going to deal with is very, very critical for us as believers, the spirit, the evidence of God's presence with us. What is the presence of God? What is the presence of God? What is being in the presence of God? God is omnipresent. And I want to start right from the beginning. God is omnipresent, which means he is present at all times and in all places. What does it mean then to be in God's presence? In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 8, God enjoyed close fellowship with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But after their sin, or when they disobeyed God, they became separated from his presence. So right from the beginning, we see that there was fellowship. The presence of God was among his people. But what, 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 what sent away the presence of God was the sin, the disobedience of Adam and Eve. And throughout the Old Testament period, we find various ways in which God revealed his presence in special ways. This includes speaking as he did, for instance, with Noah. God spoke with Noah when he was telling him about the impending judgment and the destruction of the human race. God spoke visibly with Noah. He was audible in physical form. We read in Genesis chapter 17 and chapter 18 that God also spoke with the Israelites when they were in the wilderness. God would speak to them. As he spoke with Moses, he would also instruct the Israelites. In Psalm 114 verse 7, it looks back at Israel's wilderness journey, but describes God's presence as something that could make someone tremble in, free, in fear. It says, tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob. In Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 17, it speaks of a time when God's presence will dwell in a special way in Jerusalem, saying, at that time, Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. And all the nations shall gather to it, to the presence of the Lord in Jerusalem. And they shall no more stubbornly follow their own evil heart. In the New Testament, like we have read in the Old Testament, the angel Gabriel, for instance, said he lived in the presence of God. We read that in Luke chapter 1, verse 19, when he says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you good news when he spoke to Mary. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 28 to 29 is another instance here. Paul spoke of God's presence as a time which people speak with God. God shows what is law, he declares in verse 28, God chose what is law and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. So though God's presence is everywhere, the Bible also speaks of being before God in heaven as God's presence. His special presence in certain locations, such as, as we have read in Jerusalem, and other times in which he reveals himself at a particular time or place uniquely. Today, in the New Testament church, among the New Testament believers, God's spirit lives within those who believe in him. And we read that in John 
chapter 14, verse 23. I will leave you that, that verse so that you can look at it and refer to it as we go on. We do not need to go somewhere special to seek his presence, but are called to worship him and live guided by his spirit that lives within us. We may sense God's presence in a special way, sometimes even emotionally. Yet God is present at all times and in all places, especially among the fellowship of believers. The scripture says he indwells in the presence of his people. When we praise him, he comes and inhabits Non-believers do not praise God, and he doesn't inhabit in a place where there is filth. That is why the church set apart when they raise worship and praise to him, he inhabits. That is where he, he inhabits. That is where his presence is manifest. What is the evidence of God's presence. We, our text is the spirit, the evidence of God's presence with us. Nowadays, or these days in which we live, each one of us as believers in these days, there is such, unfortunately, a great deficit in the knowledge, in the knowledge of the presence of God. Very few Christians and even churches have a revelation or, or have revelation of, of the presence of God. And listen, I'm not saying that they don't have enough services. No, there are enough services. Actually, some Sundays you have, you have five of them. And throughout the week, there are all kinds of services. There are even Bible studies. But I'm talking about the revelation of God's presence. The revelation of God's presence. Think about that. So which means that having all these activities does not necessarily amount to the revelation of God's presence. He, we hear about him. We talk about him. We have one conference after the other. But if they are devoid of the, of the revelation of God's presence, they are just meetings. They are just activities. And I thank God that at all saints, our leaders have emphasized this, that without the presence of God, it is just activity after activity. And we have constantly been challenged to consecrate ourselves, to be expectant in the presence of God. No wonder the psalmist says in Psalm 40 verse 1, I waited patiently, expectantly for my God. So we are daily encouraged to wait on the Lord in prayer. We are daily encouraged to be expectant in the presence. Because, brethren, it's not just about the many programs. There will just be programs and activity devoid of the presence of God. The presence of God is for every Christian that is born again. Not just for a few people. And in this instance, I can make an, a, 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 an example. It's not just for those who are ordained. No, the presence of God is for every Christian separated and sanctified by the law. Every born again Christian. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, it says, And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And you will seek me. Brethren, it is from seeking it is from seeking. We need to seek. We need to seek God. 
The presence of God should be discovered by each one of us. Each one of us. The Bible says, test and see. Psalm 34 verse 8. It says, test and see that the Lord is good. Listen, it's inviting us to an experience with him. Test and see for yourself. You and I are constantly invited to experience God. That's why we have programs like Divine Encounter, where you come and encounter God for yourself. You're not just being preached to. No, but it's an opportunity for you to begin to encounter God. Let have an experience, a personal experience with God. As Christians, we need awareness of the presence of God. It doesn't come from the newspapers. It doesn't come from how much time you spend somewhere else. No. You need to be in the place, in a location where you can definitely, where your signals can be encountered with the presence of God. So as Christians, we need awareness of the presence of God. We need to honor the presence and not to use it for personal gain or advantage or popularity or fame. When you honor the presence of God, the presence will increase in your life. There are some people, it doesn't matter where you send them, where you throw them. As because they have cultivated in them in themselves the awareness of God's presence in their lives, it doesn't matter where you throw them, the presence of God will show up. The power of God will be evident. There will be a demonstration of the presence of God and his power because they have cultivated in themselves. Listen, Psalm 34 verse 8, it says, test and see, discover for yourself, have an experience for yourself. Moses said, I do not want to go anywhere without your presence. And we all know that we need to be careful, not only to have the presence of God, but to always keep it. That is very profound. It's one thing to have the presence of God in your life. It's another for you to sustain it, to keep it. That's what is important in the life of a believer that is effective. Are you, am I, able to sustain the presence of God in my life? We need to be conscious of the person who fills the entire universe and holds everything together. In him, all things consist. They hold together. We need to live in the awareness of the presence of God. That's what makes a difference in my life and in your life. You see, brethren, this is the Christian life. This is the totality of the Christian life. Full package. This is the Christian life. Because some people come to church, they pray to God, but when they get out of church, they are not aware of their, that their words, their thoughts, their actions can keep or can repel the presence of God in their lives. So this is what this is what should be should be every time ringing in our hearts. Am I able to sustain the presence of God in my life? What is my fellowship like? What, who are my friends like? What do I feed my spirit with? What do I listen to? The Christian life. The Christian life is not just an occasional life. It's not just a one-time experience. It's not just a Sunday life experience. No. A daily experience experience. So what I say, what I meditate on, 
what I do, all these things can either keep or they can repel the presence of God in my life. The presence of God must be revealed in our lives, not just studied about. We can study all those books, but there must be revelation, revelation, evidence of God's presence. It must be there in my life. Many people study, and it's not bad to study and to a lot of theology about the presence. But ultimately, the presence of God must be revealed. I must have an encounter, a revelation of the presence of God. There must be evidence of God's presence. The presence of God. But say, you will say, I have never felt it. There are some people who will say, well, I have never felt the presence of God. Actually, some people say, I've been in church for years, but I've never felt the presence of God. At least I have met such people. You and I could have met such people. See, the presence of God is called the presence of God because it is the atmosphere of heaven. That's why it is called the presence of God. The atmosphere of heaven. Let me expound a little bit more on this. It is an atmosphere of the person of God himself. God himself dwells. That's it's called the presence of God. When God comes to a place, he carries an atmosphere around him. Look at the children of Israel in the wilderness at Mount Sinai. Every time God would be descending on that mountain, every time the Lord descended on that mountain, there was evidence of his presence. The Israelites would get to an extent where they would say, Moses, you go for us. We will be consumed. They would not stand the presence of God on that mountain. God would descend on that mountain. The Bible says the mountain would shake violently. When God comes to a place, he carries an atmosphere around him. Have you gone to a place where you felt an environment filled with demons? I have. Experienced a whole city which feels like you are covered in a blanket, an evil presence that is trying to suffocate you. You literally feel that the air is stuffed with an evil presence. There is an evil presence of oppression. When you go to a place and there is an evil presence, it is because of the demonic ruler of that place, the principality in that place, rules over that place. And there is evidence of his demonic authority in that place. There is evidence. There is oppression. There is fear. There is poverty. There is lack, there is death, there is sickness and disease. There is an evil presence that is, ho that is hovering over that place. And sometimes, even Christians, sometimes we easily feel the presence of these, of these demons in a place, and yet we cannot even sense the presence of God. It's much easier for us to sense the evil presence of other things other than sensing the presence of God. See, when God comes to a service or in a prayer meeting, there is something that happens different because his person is there. His person is there. It's a challenge for us. We are being invited 
to have a personal revelation, a communal revelation of the presence of God. It is high time our spiritual antennas are sharpened to begin to experience the presence of God. If you are among those that have been in church for all these years and have never sensed the presence of God. But even in our prayer meetings, the presence of God can be sensed in there. Never separate God's atmosphere with his presence. Because wherever God goes, his presence and his atmosphere are present. So you cannot separate that atmosphere, that presence. You cannot separate it. The presence of God for us as believers is the necessary supernatural environment that enables us to function effectively. That's what it is. And let me dare say, it is a necessity like the air we breathe. We need, we need, we need the presence of God. That is what distinguishes us. That is what distinguishes ministry from any other vocation. That is what distinguishes a live church, a growing church, an effective church in a community from any other organization. That's what distinguishes the presence of God. No wonder without the presence of God, a church is dead. It's not living. So the presence of God in this, is, in this instance is that the air we breathe. Without the presence of God, we are dead. We cannot function. Psalm 51 verse 11 says, King David was praying and he said, do not cast me away from your presence and do not take away your Holy Spirit from me. He knew the moment the presence leaves him, he was dead. The moment the presence of God leaves that church building, Every activity there will just be religious. Nothing. No life. No life. We just become mechanical. We are dry and lukewarm. As good as dead. A ministry without the presence of God is just mechanical. You just strive. You worship until you are, you are dead tired. You are not blessed. You are not refreshed. A prayer without the presence of God is just mechanical repetition of words. It is dry prayer. But with the presence of God, your faith is activated. And results will be there. There will be evidence. There will be evidence. There is necessity for us to function. See, we are designed to be and to live in the presence of God. That's what we are designed to be. The scripture says in him we live and move and have our being. We are designed to live, to move, and to have our existence in God. That is what we are. Jesus made the way for us to be in God's presence. When man sinned in the Garden of Eden, he was separated from God's presence. But when Jesus came and paid the price on the cross, praise the Lord, it was restored for us. Our relationship with God was restored. Now you and I can access the very presence of God. We can. Now, how do you know if you are experiencing God's presence? That's my final addresses. How, how do I know? 
How do I know? Yes, we've talked about the presence of God and it sounds like it's so wonderful. It's, it, there is nothing like it. There's nothing like the presence. But how do I know? We've talked about evidence. But how do I know that I'm really experiencing God's presence? I would submit three. Three aspects. Number one, the omnipresence of God. God is present everywhere. God is present. And he's present at all times. It's just a call away in prayer. God is present. The problem is not with him. The problem is with us. The problem is with me. God is present. God is present. One of the ways we are reminded of his presence with us is through the beauty of his creation. Look at the beauty of his creation. That's one of the ways in which we are reminded of his presence. His abiding presence. The heavens declare the glory of God. Psalm 19 verse 1. And the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Wow. The heavens, when you look at the heavens, they declare. They are already praising. They are already speaking of the glory of God. And the sky above proclaims of his handiwork. God will paint that brush. He uses his brush and he paints everything new. The Bible says there are new masses every morning. So every morning the sky is new and beautiful. Sometimes it's gray. That is fine. In the evening it's orange and beautiful. In the night it is dotted with, with stars. Beautiful. The heavens, the skies above proclaim his handiwork. The presence of our God. In this way, God is, is even present with those who have not put their faith in him, by the way. God is even present with those who have never put their faith in him. This common grace is a way that God's goodness extends even to those who are not, who are not even aware of his presence. Have you sometimes been in such an instance where you're not even aware, but yet God is there? Why? He's only present. He's everywhere at all times. That is his mercy. His mercy. He's with you even when you are not aware. His hand is outstretched over you. God's goodness. Praise God for his goodness. God's eternal power and divine nature have been on display since the creation of the world, giving all people a chance to know him. God has always given us a chance to know him. That is why he doesn't discriminate. It is mourning for everyone, including the most wicked of all. It is evening and it is night time. And the following day, it's a different day. Beautiful, but for everyone. Why is God doing that? So that every man who has not known him would be given a chance to know him. Even when we sin, we want to run and hide, hide from God. Yet we cannot actually escape his his omnipresence. We can't. Psalm 139, verse 7 to 10, it says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make a bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle, on the far side of the sea, 
even there, your hand will guide me. Oh, wonderful. Your right hand will uphold me fast. There is nowhere we can run away from God. His omnipresence is there. Why? So that you and I are given a chance to know him. Secondly, looked about, about the omnipresence of God, but now we also know there's the indwelling, indwelling presence of God. One of the amazing blessings we have as believers, child of God in Christ, is the presence of God living inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm not leaving you as orphans. I'll send you another one, a comforter. The presence of the Holy Spirit is dwelling us in the same way the tabernacle and the temple house the presence of God in the Old Testament. The Spirit of God now dwells within us. We are the temple of the living God. We are reminded this afternoon that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So you and I are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. We are the carriers of God's presence. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are the presence. We are the people that house the presence of God. You walk with the, with the presence of God. You are a VIP. You carry the presence of God with you. You carry the presence of God with you. He's in dwelling presence. Praise the Lord for that. God indwells us. He abides in us. Listen, if you choose to abide in the Lord, he will abide. If you choose to remain in God, he will remain. He abides in us. And number three, last but not least, is the manifest presence of God. We've looked at the omnipresence of God. We've looked at the indwelling presence of God. But now there is also the manifest presence of God. The presence of God is everywhere at all times. We looked at that and we saw it. His omnipresence is evident. And it is evident in the fact that he is the God omnipresent. He's everywhere. So for followers of Jesus, he's with us always. God is with us always. He said, I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. Through the indwelling spirit of God, God is with us always. Yet further still, there are times when we experience the presence of God in special ways. This is often called the manifest presence of God because he's with us in a clear and convincing way. When God is clearly among us, with us, in a convincing way, the manifest presence of God is evident. We know the manifest presence of God through our experiences with him. And each one of us has had an experience with God. Remember that experience that you had with God. When you knelt down on your knees and prayed. And before you knew it, you were no, no longer there. Everything else ceased to matter. But the presence of God. The manifest presence of God in your room. In your prayer room. And it's not the same for every person. And in all places, no. Each one of us 
has a unique experience of God, his manifest presence. But it will always be in agreement with, with scripture. It has to be in agreement with scripture. Some people may see visions. Others will hear a clear, still small voice. Others may even see or hear something. But yet others may not even hear or feel anything. But experience feelings of peace and joy beyond what? And some people have, have felt that peace, that, that refreshing presence of God through his peace in stormy lives, in stormy moments. God's presence, manifest presence. So you may, you and I may experience the presence of God through a song. For those of us that sing, you may experience, I've experienced his manifest presence. Sometimes you feel some goosebumps. As you sing, or when you get into a place and there is worship that is deep and thick with the presence of God, you, you literally feel like an electricity. And you feel a driving, a craving for more. It is like you are being pulled into it. I felt that kind of feeling. You are being pulled into the presence. And I think that is why the scripture comes in that Deep calleth unto deep. It's like you are being called into the depth of the presence of God. His manifest presence. It may be through providence. When you encounter provision, miraculous divine provision. Some of us feel it that way. The presence of God may prompt you to pray. Or give you a love for the word of God. The presence of God. It draws you into worshiping deeply. It can draw you into more communion with God. And time in that moment does not even matter. It may begin to reveal the word of God in a much more deeper way. The presence, the manifest presence of God. When we live lives marked by the presence of God, we become activated to impact others. That's what happens with the presence of God. We become essential to the lives of others. We become people that influence environments. Let me conclude by saying we can trust in God's omnipresence. Even when we feel far away from the presence of God, we can remember that Jesus, our Emmanuel, is with us to the end of the age. That is what he promised. Hang on to that promise. And we can seek the presence of the Comforter, God's Holy Spirit, to feed us daily as we grow in our love and knowledge of him. God desires that we may be drawn deeper and deeper in his presence. Because without his presence, no, we are nothing. We are lost without him. We are lost without him. May God create in us a hunger for his presence. May we seek him because he said, seek me with all your heart. You will find me. May we seek him while he is still there. And we will find him. May God bless you. Thank you for this opportunity. Amen.